Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the second Wednesday of the month, which means it's time for Rewind Your Body Clock with Janie Goddard, all the way from the UK. And today she has a very special guest who's going to discuss the plant-based Fountain of Youth, none other than Dr. Frank Sabatino. Please welcome both of them to the show. We get a two for today. Yay. I know. Well, you needed someone of a certain age for this conversation. So that's why they got me as a guest. You know what I'm saying? So I'm well, here. We, we are so happy to see both of you. Are we allowed to say um, how you guys know each other? Yes. Yeah, why not? We've been partners for 10 years. Okay, just because we, we want people to know that as good looking as both of you are, neither of you are currently available. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends how this goes, actually, AJ. You know, if, if he messes up, then, you know, all bets are off. What can I say? And they don't want me anyway. There's such limited time left. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> and you guys don't even live in the same country. How did you even meet to, to hook up? Ah, oh, well, um, we got set up. I mean, it's the same old, same old, you know, uh, I wasn't looking, Frank wasn't looking, uh, obviously not speaking for you, Frank, but I know you'll, you'll have your say. And, um, but yeah, this uh, mutual friend of ours, absolutely lovely, lovely lady, Bethany Vinyl, um, she uh, realized that we probably needed to meet each other. And we were adamant that we didn't want to. Janie, um, and, Janie and Bethany were both at Hippocrates doing their own little health yeah. programs. Yeah. And I was coming up to visit Bethany and then Bethany said, you have got to meet this woman. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And she tells Janie, you've got to meet this doctor friend of mine. And Janie was like, yeah, one more pompous doctor. Perfect. So we were both kind of like, you know, nah. and then we met and it was kismet, you know. It was, it was. But you know, the funny thing, AJ, was that uh, because I was so adamant, I was not interested. I'd actually been for a massage and it was a lovely massage, but you know, of course, they no makeup, you get all the oil in your hair. So I turned up and it's sort of wearing my sort of like, you know, relaxed sort of like hippie clothes and all the rest of it. Walked in and there's this guy sitting at the table and I just said, oh dear, big mistake. Um, he is so gorgeous. Uh, so I spied him from sort of like, you know, 30 paces and I thought, well, how can I shush myself up, you know, sort of make myself a bit more presentable but yeah it worked it was okay we chatted and uh actually it was it was a pretty instantaneous connection so that's fantastic but but it's long distance how often do you guys get to see each other um we usually try for every couple of months i mean obviously frank is incredibly busy uh stateside i'm extraordinarily busy as well this side um and we both have families to look after as well and so you know we we make it work and because we're not sort of young you know we're not kids we're not sort of older people when you know uh, adults raising young families or anything like that this is the best 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 set, sort of form of relationship in a way because every time we do get together it's so special it's a honeymoon every couple of months i mean quite honestly you couldn't yeah, it was it was less during the pandemic because yeah. of all those restrictions and now you know, Janie used to come every year for a couple of months and she hasn't been able to come to Florida because neither of us is vaccinated. So you're not able to travel. But according to our president, in May, they're going to lift all the restrictions. So Janie will be able to come back and she'll come to the conference with me, the, the uh, NHA conference. So fabulous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we make it work, AJ. And also, I mean, quite honestly, long distance relationships would not survive. There's so many people are in them nowadays, but they wouldn't survive if it wasn't for things like FaceTime, for Zoom and, you know, instantaneous free phone calls, essentially. Uh, and so, you know, we, we probably actually speak more than most normal conventional couples actually speak we speak every day, usually for an hour, a couple of hours, whatever, you know, so we communicate um probably more intensely um than than many couples do it's a really bizarre thing um but obviously that isn't a substitute for actually being together i mean look this is a very hot man what can i say you know <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's when we get together it's a, it's an eternal uh honeymoon honey that's what happens so it's beautiful how many yeah. years of plant-based eating do you both have under your belt well me it's about 45 years yeah, me, I'm just a baby. It's, uh, it's over 15 years. So 60 years between us. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I came to the party a little bit late, uh, which I think I think I told you last time is my, my big I think with with all vegans, 
the big regret is you just didn't do it sooner. Um, I know we all say that, don't we? But um, yeah, you know, I wasn't fortunate enough to be able to sort of, you know, get into the lifestyle uh, sooner. I wish I had, but you know, you have to make up for it and do as much campaigning and awareness raising and, and all the rest as you possibly can really. Um, and, you know, so I'm making up for lost time. Great. Well, we think we found the fountain of youth. What is it, Dr. Sabatino? Well, who, who is this squirrel that I'm looking at? This. Uh... Oh, well, I have to take myself off camera or I'll show up. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, that's like me with my big cheeks, isn't it? You also have got squirrel cheeks, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's where I keep all my snacks for later. A great <laughs> so, idea. Sorry, I'm cutting across you, Frank. Talk, tell us what you're talking about today. I think that'd be a really good way of getting going. <laughs> So are we on? Are we on? Yeah, yeah, you're you're on. Okay, you're yeah. on. Well, look, we, uh, you know, everybody out there, me included, uh, you know, we're all concerned about how we're aging, getting older. I think you know everybody can kind of agree to that. And intriguingly, the most rapidly growing uh, demographic of our population are people older than the age of sixty-five, and I find that quite amazing. So you know, the ways that we are able to maintain quality of life, performance and function as we get older is gonna be very important because when you look at that population of people, on average, you know, after that age, you got people on at least one to three or four medications. They're dealing with some kind of disability. They're dealing with fears of, you know, what's going to happen to them in terms of their quality of life. And I'm here to say today with, uh, with uh, Janie, as we go through this, that, the truth of the matter is aging is really, and the way we age and the quality of energy that we have when we age is truly a byproduct of the choices that we actually make. So there's a lot of power within the routine lifestyle that we create for the quality and the way that we create aging across time. And, you know, there are some models that we'll talk about today that will kind of address that, but frankly, on a very simple level, you're going to see that when we eat in a wholly plant food manner and involve ourselves with certain things about exercise and stress management and work on certain things related to mindset, that there's so much that each of us, every one of us can do to improve this, what we'll call not lifespan as much as health span. You know, the idea of people, you know, in the United States is kind of intriguing because the badge of honor for the medical profession is if they can just get people to kind of last longer, they have some kind of, they feel that that's some kind of accomplishment. It doesn't really matter that you may be gasping for breath or you can't take a step without gasping for breath or you're on a respirator or you're really in some infirm state. That's not really the kind of aging that we want to talk about. We want to talk about, you know, that dynamic state that we have energy right up to the time where maybe life goes out like blowing a candle out, like a whisper, without all the disability and disease and, and horror and pain that so many people experience as they move on in life. So I think it's a very important talk, uh, even for younger people to realize that the more you can plant the seeds of what we're going to talk about today earlier, that quality of life, that quality and the ability to experience and enjoy the latter years of our lives with function and, and, and all the beauty that can be part of that will occur. So, mm -hmm. you know, everything we talk about today will apply at every age, but it especially applies to people who yeah. are really concerned with how they're aging and getting older. I, I think so. And I think one, I think one other thing, Frank, is, is something that I, I always find so important when we are talking about these sorts of topics is to underpin the fact that the quality of information that, that you're sharing today is so spectacular that, you know, and I think it might be worth just saying a little bit about um, the, the work that you've done in gerontology. It was a really funny story, actually, AJ, was that uh, before I knew Frank, I was doing a lot of writing on and research in the anti, let's call it the anti-aging uh, field. And, um, I kept referencing this uh, Sabatino FD without realizing 
uh, who the, I had no idea who this science, who this research scientist was. And um, it wasn't until a few months after I actually met Frank that I realized it was one and the same person, because Frank has this extraordinary pedigree in the science of aging. And I don't know whether a lot of people know that about him, because they know Frank for his uh, plant exclusive uh, teachings, his um, water only fasting teachings, and so much more. But I don't know if they realize the the actual level of, that Frank has gone into on, in this particular field. So Frank, could you possibly just say a little bit more about that, uh, the work that you did with Mazarow and-, and Yeah, Wolfie? just, just His, briefly, because when I yeah. finished my, when I finished my PhD at Emory Med School, which was in cell biology and neuroendocrinology, I was very fortunate to get an offer from the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio by the chairman who was the name Ed Mazaro. And he had um, had con connection with some of the people in the department I was at. They had the largest aging research project in the world in the United States at that time. It was really top notch and they pioneered everything that we know about calorie restriction and aging. They're the ones that really showed in rats the idea that when you take animals that are living normally, and you reduce their calorie input by 50%, uh, by 40%, they will live a full 50% longer. And not only do they live longer, but they have very rarely the diseases of aging, which in mammals are usually joint problems, heart problems, and kidney problems. So these animals live longer with less disease. And of course, I was privy to being part of that. And I was very much tied into that original research. And that's when I got at that point the Brookdale Fellowship in Gerontology and Aging. I was connected to the aging world very much in depth at that point. And I wound up publishing a number of articles in that department that Ed Mazaro, who was the chairman of that department, he looked like Yoda in Star Wars. He was kind of an interesting little man, but he was the granddaddy of metabolism in the world at that time. He had really paved the ground and he just happened to love me. He just loved my the way I worked. He loved who I was. And and, I, and he was the most gracious person I ever met because he, you know, a chairman rarely will allow you to be first author on papers that you're a postdoc in in their labs. And he lets that happen all the time. So a number of those papers were Sabatino et al because of the graciousness of uh, Dr. Ed Mazaro. So yeah, so I was very fortunate. And what's the most important part of that in a way is that I think everybody can appreciate that if you have a, man a manipulation as simple as just restricting calories, and it's urging people to live 50% longer, that would be like us adding 40 years to our lives by the simple act of calorie restriction. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that outcome was so profound in science that people were shaking their heads. Like, how could this very simple manipulation create such a remarkable outcome? And in the search for what those answers were, they came up with a number of mechanisms and ideas which, by the way, as I got into it more and more, I came to find out were the very ways that eating plant exclusive and living the lifestyle that we're recommending actually motivates and, and activates. So when we talk about healthy lifestyle and we talk about eating, you know, uh, low calorie density, high nutrient density foods, which we'll talk about a little bit, and we talk about making it plant exclusive so that the energy is at the highest in the environment that we're informing the body with. We are actually activating the very mechanisms that the best science that's out there on aging came to find out is how animals increase longevity and aging. So that, that, that was profound. And I, and I love to share that because it just goes to show that as time passes, science at the deepest level, at the most sophisticated level, just vindicates everything that we're talking about in our plant-based uh, information. It just really highlights that everything we're talking about comes from the most profound evidence base. And it's not like we need science to tell us that eating fruits and vegetables are good. I mean, I saw a post that said we're the kind of the, the craziest species because we need uh, scientific research to tell us that eating fruits and vegetables are healthy. Well, we know that. But it is true that when we can vindicate all of that at the deepest scientific level, it really shakes up the world to a certain extent. And that's what it did. And that's what I try to teach it. That's why I love to teach this information.
Frank, could you speak to uh, the concept of calorie density? Because I know um, on a presentation that we were talking about recently, you've got a really good um, uh, slide that I would like to show in a moment. But if you can just touch on uh, the concept of calorie density. Well, um, it's intriguing is that when we look when we look at the outcome of chronic diseases, it's intriguing that one of the, the problems that occurs that is an overriding umbrella for the promotion of many major diseases is just the, the outcome of obesity and increased body fat and weight gain. Um, and it's intriguing that when that goes up, the risk of heart disease goes up, high blood pressure goes up, which is one of the most profound risk factors for heart disease. Uh, we find that stroke in outcome goes up. We find, interestingly enough, that every known form of cancer goes up with an increase in body fat. So many of the um, major cancer organizations, National Cancer Institute, American Cancer Institute, after looking at these huge epidemiological studies that went on over 30 plus years that showed that even marginal increases in fat and weight gain would result in an increase in every known form of cancer in the human population. These cancer organizations said, you know what? People need to get on board with eating a diet that is predominantly less than 600 to 700 calories a pound. So it's kind of intriguing that if you look at the kind of nutritional plan that we're recommending with plant, plant, plant exclusive, that when you're eating whole plant foods and you're eating these whole plant foods, you'll notice that like fruits and non-starchy vegetables are only 100 to 400 calories a pound starchy veggies, potatoes, oatmeal, whole grains, beans, lentils, between three and almost 750 to 780 calories a pound. And then you'll notice that all of the processed food from there goes upwards of 1,000 to 4,000 calories a pound. So the truth of the matter is, if you want to embrace the most important information from the, the outcome of even chronic diseases like cancer, you want that diet to be 90 to 95% in those first two categories all the fresh fruits, green leafy vegetables, starchy vegetables, potato, oatmeal, and the like. It's not that you can't eat bread and pasta that are made from whole grains, but as you lengthen the food chain, you'll notice that the calorie density gets higher and that by shortening the food chain, meaning eating foods closer to the way they grow to the sun, you're maximizing energy. And understand something that on a daily basis, the body is in a constant dance of life and death. Every second, millions, countless millions of cells are being destroyed while countless millions are being born. So the body's in a state of renewal on a constant level. And the bottom line is the more we provide the best energetics, and the other benefit of that is that not only do those, low, those foods that we wanna focus on have the lowest calorie density, but they have the greatest nutrient density and especially non-caloric nutrients like vitamins, minerals, and what we call phytonutrients, which is a whole class of nutrients that are like antioxidants, uh, things of that nature, polyphenols. And we're going to see that those particular mac micronutrients are actually activating hormones in the human body. They're activating enzymes in the human body that are what we now know are the best ways to prevent cellular aging. So it's kind of intriguing that when we really work with that eating plan that has the lowest calorie density from whole natural foods with the greatest micronutrients, we're actually providing ourselves with a calorie input that is right in line with preventing the most powerful chronic diseases that we know, including cancer, while activating the best anti-aging enzymes and nutrients and hormones in the human body. And that's pretty profound when you think about it. And understand that in those studies that were done on calorie restriction, if all you did was take calories away, those animals would be nutrient deficient because there's a chance you would be removing vitamins and minerals and some of the important cofactors that they need. So in those studies, those animals are all supplemented. But here's the beautiful thing. By eating the plant-exclusive foods that are building in their own calorie restriction while giving you the opportunity to eat huge volume, so you don't have that sense of being restricted, 
it's also providing the high end micronutrients that normally animals would have to be supplemented with. Here, the diet's providing all of that. So in a way, when you're eating these whole natural foods, you're building in the best that we've seen in calorie restriction in those anti-aging studies or those longevity studies by just affording and availing ourselves of eating the diet that we're recommending, whole natural plant foods as close to their natural state as we can, as raw as you can with some cooked starches and building that in and things that are more calorie dense that still have value in the diet, like nuts and seeds, we can take those in very small amounts, but they do have value. And in the process, we're leaving out oils that are extracted from foods. We're leaving out concentrated salts and refined sugars that only compromise the diet with irritation and calorie density. So, you know, we, we, we have this way of maximizing the best that we've seen in science by the simple act of eating a plant exclusive diet in whole natural form. And that's a really remarkable thing and reducing damage in the process. And this is very important because while the body is going through a constant state of renewal, growth of cells, while it gets rid of old debris and toxic material and waste, there is damage that can occur. And we now know that aging very simply is when the accumulation of damage outweighs the body's ability at self renewal. So just think about that, that kind of a seesaw. So if you really support renewal by minimizing damage, you've got maximum energy to maintain order and quality of life and energy and performance and productivity. But if you start creating choices or making choices that inspire damage, that inform the body with damage, that irritate and damage it, now you're tilting the body toward the state of disorder that we basically call disease and death. And so it's just a seesaw. And that seesaw is really under our control. Every second of every day, we make choices that will inform that teeter-totter. And the way that we inform it will lead toward more renewal or more damage, disease, and death. And that's something that actually is up to us. It's not something that just happens in our lives. And that's why I tell people aging, while it is an ongoing process, the way that it goes, the rate at which it goes, the outcome that it produces is so much a part of how we inform that dynamic of life, health, and death on a day-to-day -day basis and on a choice-to-choice -choice basis. Indeed. Um, I think one of the things that we need to really touch on is the, the, the way that chronic inflammation actually underpins all of the disease processes we wrongly associate with being a natural part of the aging process. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, and what we do know, of course, is that the, the choices, coming back to this beautiful concept of choices that we make from day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, those choices inform whether we drive our bodies towards a state of inflammation chronic inflammation or not. Um, and I know that's something that you're very keen to speak about, Frank. So would you be able to talk about the mechanisms of inflammation um, just to give everybody an overview of that? And then perhaps we can take a little bit of a deeper dive and talk about something, you know, some of the, the damage hypotheses um, in aging and uh, things like, you know, um, advanced glycation, end products and so on, which I know you're also very keen to speak about. Well, well they, they all tie together because what you're going to see that Many of the aging researchers, when they looked at, you know, what are the mechanisms for how these animals were increasing longevity, or on the other side of that, what are the mechanisms that promote aging? One of the things they realized was that chronic inflammation underpins all aging process, so that you can make the case that there is about a, when we have inflammation in the body, let's start there. Because I, I think it has, a, it gets a bad rep when in fact inflammation has a very valuable, uh, plays a very valuable role in the health and well-being of the body. Okay. It's the natural way, number one, that the immune system is able to heal tissue damage if there's an injury. And it's also the way the body can take care of errant cells like cancer cells 
And it's also the way the immune system can handle viral and bacterial infection. So it has to be able to create a certain amount of healthy inflammation. And so if I damage a part of my hand here and there's a cut or a wound, you're going to have white blood cells rushing to the area. There's going to be a release of inflammatory chemicals that we call cytokines. And these are just nothing more than little markers and chemicals that activate that whole inflammatory process. But they're also a way to measure inflammation in the body, because when they go up in the blood, we know that there's an ongoing inflammatory process that's in play. So initially, inflammation is very important and very real but it's only when it becomes exaggerated because of chronic wear and tear that it now can outlive its usefulness. It would be like me rubbing the back of my hand. At first, that feels kind of nice. I don't do that often, but again, if I keep doing that, it's gonna get a little bit irritated and hot. If I keep doing that in all of my ignorance, it's gonna go from irritation to inflammation. And if I go keep rubbing that, that inflammation is gonna be chronic and eventually it will ulcerate then it will become fibrotic and eventually it'll even form into cancer. That, that continuum from irritation to inflammation to ulceration to fibrosis and cancer is exactly the way damage and aging occurs in every single cell and tissue of the body when there's ongoing factors of irritation. So the, bet, the question then is how do we move from a healthy state of inflammation to a chronic state that now underpins some of the worst aspects of aging. And that's where the lifestyle choices come into play. And one of the most powerful ways that that happens is of course with our eating habits. And the truth of the matter is, when you look at the eating habits of people in the West and Americans, we've talked about this before, but you know, the average person is taking 30 plus percent of their calories from animal products. They're taking another 50% plus from junk food. They're eating only 5% of their diets from colorful vegetation and less than 1% to 2% from greens. So if you look at how they're eating, those, pro those foods, the animal products, the uh, processed foods, and of course, this means fried junk food, all of the processed bakery product goods, all of the dairy, the meat, and all of these things are typically pre uh, presented and prepared under high heat and pressure. So when you do that, you're exaggerating chemicals that literally will promote inflammation. So for example, those foods will provide a high level of saturated and trans fats. Well, we know that when fats are transformed by making processed junk food, those trans fats play a major role in increasing inflammation. They cause a damage to the membrane of cells. They interfere with cells being able to be youthful and to allow things to move in a very mobile way in and out of those cells. So they actually age cells by the process of trans fatty acids. And again, that's coming from junk food. It's coming from processed high fried foods, French fries, donuts, all of those things. And of course, meat products, which are high in saturated fat, that now will, again, add to that story, causing more irritation and inflammation. Now, just as an example, you'll have those saturated fats. We know saturated fat will block the ability of insulin to work effectively. So interestingly enough, when you have that happening, sugar can't enter cells, can't enter liver and muscle cells because they're full of fat. Those animal fats and everything are absorbed very quickly. It's very rapid absorption. So they fill up space in liver and muscle cells that sugar would normally take, and now it can't. So they literally send out signals to block the way insulin attaches to its receptors, and it doesn't work. And we create the problem called insulin resistance. So when insulin is resisted, sugar levels in the blood go up. Sugar, when it goes up, is very toxic to the body. Again, promoting inflammation and toxicity. The body thinks we're not making enough insulin, so it overproduces insulin, what we call hyperinsulinemia. And people don't realize that insulin, when it is excessive, is a growth factor. It triggers the abnormal growth. It's actually a tumor-producing factor over time when it's exaggerated along with high sugar. So we increase body fat. We increase all of that. We know that when you've got 
uh, the obesity going up or the animal products, you see this graph here that as fat levels go up, we see an increased risk of all known forms of cancer. On the horizontal axis, you have body mass index, which is a measure of weight and obesity, excessive weight and obesity. And on the vertical axis, you got those curves. And it shows that as body fat and body mass goes up, you're increasing the risk of cancer. So get this, from that insulin resistance, from the high saturated fat and sugar levels going up, what do you think the body's going to do with that sugar to protect the body against the devastating effects of high sugar? It's going to try to convert that into triglycerides and fat. So it increases body fat. And this is very important because fat cells themselves are like an organ unto themselves. They're releasing a whole series of compounds that are their own cytokines. So inflammation is promoted by weight gain, which is fed by eating refined processed diets to a great extent. And get that, that's important because that's why if you have body fat going up that can trigger cancer and inflammation, it's promoting this idea of premature aging. We know that when we eat animal products, animal bodies, dairy, meat, and all of that. And we have a lot of processed food that have processed oils like safflower oil and corn oil, all of these very processed polyunsaturated fats. It brings in, the animal products bring in a very high level of arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is the primary fatty acid in the membrane of all animal cells, including our own. So if you exaggerate arachidonic acid by eating meat and dairy and refined foods, you're activating the pathway in the body, the essential amino uh, fatty acid pathway called the omega-6 pathway. That pathway is designed to create healthy inflammation. But when we exaggerate meat, dairy, and refined food, we exaggerate that inflammatory pathway. Instead of highlighting the anti-inflammatory pathway, the omega-3 family, which is really produced from seeds and nuts and whole grains and greens and legumes. So you could see how the balance of power will shift. Yeah, you could see it here. Then on the left side, you see omega-6, and that pathway is designed to produce inflammation because we made the point, we need a certain amount of healthy inflammation. But because our diet over the last hundred years has shifted into such a dominance of refined foods and animal products, we have literally slanted the entire population in the, direct, in, in the direction of inflammation. Now, that's very important because as it turns out, and we'll tie this together, the same foods that are promoting all of that excessive inflammation are also provo promoting the greatest development and the presence of what we call free radicals, which are little scavengers of oxygen that are also a byproduct of eating the same way, excessive refined foods, high animal products, and the combination of those antioxidants, they themselves, which are scavengers, trying to find a way to balance themselves chemically. And in the process, they wind up damaging the membranes and cells of every part of the body. Every major chronic disease, every major aging problem is linked with the presence of free radicals, also called oxidants. And in this picture here, you can see a membrane of a cell that has yellow. The yellow is the fat. And when fats become overprocessed in junk food and animal food, they become oxidized and they create oxidative stress, which now will inflame and damage the wall of that vessel. So I want people to understand that the process of oxidation, these free radicals that are coming in in fried food, coming in in junk food, coming in in really processed animal products, coming in in cigarette smoke, coming in in alcohol consumption, coming in in the exposure to pesticides and herbicides, these chemicals themselves provide such an ongoing inflammation. I'll give you a classic example. I think this example will really explain it to people because really one of the number one problems and diseases that we have, of course, is heart disease, right? And we know that heart disease occurs when the lining of blood vessels become damaged and they start producing plaque that literally blocks the flow of blood moving through those vessels. So get this, 
If I have factors of irritation and inflammation because of those nutritive products that I have, and I'm eating a diet that's high in junk food and animal products, which does not have antioxidants. And why? Because all of the antioxidants that help us, guess where they live? They live in the colors of fruits and vegetables, the flavonoids, that color, they're the pigments in all of those foods. And we've always said, you don't need to be a biochemist. You just need to put a rainbow on your plate. But when you're eating animal foods, what's the color of those foods? Well, brown, black, and gray. I always tell people, what's the basic color of the cuisine in most hospitals? Black, brown, and gray. You know it's not happening. We need to put this rainbow on your plate. And notice on this slide, it says you get whole foods provide 50% less inflammation and 50 to 60 times more antioxidant content than any other eating plan. Think about how powerful that is for protection. But let's go back to my story. If I have these products, these oxidants, these free radicals, these inflammatory chemicals from the excesses of meat and dairy and processed food, they're going to go into the bloodstream. And just like when I was rubbing the back of my hand, it's going to go from irritation to chronic inflammation on the lining of those vessels. So now you damage that wall of that blood vessel. What do you think the body and its wisdom is going to do? It's going to try to heal that. So it's going to bring in platelets. It's going to bring in white blood cells. It's going to start releasing cytokines and inflammatory agents. It's going to then even increase the presence of cholesterol as a way to heal that damage. And in the process of that, trying to deal with that damage, you start forming plaque. Everything starts to accumulate fat and calcium and cholesterol. And as that plaque grows, what's happening to the space of that blood vessel? It's getting smaller. So now less blood can move through it, but what's the blood carrying that that heart needs in that blood vessel to the heart? Well, oxygen. So as that plaque develops from that underlying inflammation and oxidative damage, we now block the flow of blood supply to the heart. We cut off oxygen to the heart, and that oxygen is needed for the energy and the vitality and life of those heart cells. So when they become deprived of oxygen, guess what? They begin to die. And if enough of those cells die, guess what? You and I die. And that process that I just described is the number one killer of men and women in the Western world. And it is an aging phenomenon. It is not so. And the sad commentary is we're seeing that process now happening in children under the age of 10 in countries like the United States. They're aging at a rate that we've never seen before. We're seeing type two diabetes, which is a mature onset form that usually develops later in life, now showing up in our people between the ages of 18 and 30. So we're seeing people aging at a more rapid rate. But understand this, I only talked about blood flow and irritation and inflammation to blood vessels in the heart. But remember, when we have that inflammation and oxidative free radical damage going on in the body, it's affecting blood vessels everywhere. So it's affecting blood vessels to the brain, blood vessels to the genitals. So anywhere that that inflammation and blockage occurs, we're going to lose function. So erectile dysfunction, which 50% of men after the age of 40 in the United States has erectile dysfunction. That's unconscionable. Erectile dysfunction is heart disease of the penis. It's just blocking blood vessels to the genitals. Alzheimer's, we now know, is not just a neurological disease. In fact, some people cast it now as type 3 diabetes. It's a neurovascular disease. So if we're blocking blood vessels to the brain, now we have Alzheimer's or cognitive deficits. And this is the sad commentary because we've tried to look at these diseases as if they have their own identity and then create a whole arsenal of treatments medically to attack these individual problems, when in fact, the only thing different is location. The underlying process is exactly the same. It's irritation, inflammation, vascular blockage, oxygen deprivation, and damage to tissue. And of course, the unique location will have different symptoms. The way the brain's going to respond to inflammation will be a different set of symptoms than the way the heart does. But just because the symptoms are different, we can't get lost with the fact that the underlying cause is the same. And in the old hygienic model, we call that the unity of cause. And so I want people to understand that this process of how tissues are being damaged and aged has a lot to do with the ongoing choices that we're making and how foods are providing and informing the body 
with inflammatory agents. For, for example, in heart disease, we've made cholesterol the culprit of the story. It's not cholesterol that's the culprit. It's the oxidized form of cholesterol that's the culprit, meaning cholesterol itself, the LDL, the very low density lipoprotein form of cholesterol becomes a dangerous reactive free radical. It attaches with oxygen in a way that it's a reactive oxygen species. And when that LDL that's oxidized gets into that wall, it's gonna inflame and damage that wall. And get this, anytime you eat processed foods that are having in their processing eggs, milk, dairy, or meat of any kind, you're bringing in a high concentration of what are called oxysterols, already oxidized forms of cholesterol. And you're laying that into the system. So people need to realize that these food choices are so, 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 so profound for giving us an opportunity to reduce damage and allow the body the natural level of inflammation it needs to survive without exaggerating it to create the damage of aging. Mm, absolutely, Frank. And the other part of the picture I wanted to touch on as we draw to an end for this session is um, what a part, a really important part of the aging process, um, which is the formation of advanced glycation end products, again, part of the inflammatory picture. Um, I just wanted to, if you could sort of speak to that, and I'm going to share um, screen again, uh, just to give people an idea of the uh, AGE content of foods. But before I do that, can you set the stage and tell people? Yeah, exactly you know, in the, in the aging research, when they looked at animals that had better longevity, those animals that were calorie restricted, what they discovered was, and this was an interesting discovery, and I was very fortunate because I wound up publishing a number of papers with this so I could speak to this directly. They observed that when sugar levels go up in the body, there's an opportunity for those sugar levels to start to interfere with the way proteins function, meaning they literally can attach to proteins in a way they call it cross-linking because if you look at protein, you can imagine protein as a string of beads and the beads on the string are what we call amino acids, the building blocks of protein. Now, most proteins are very complicated. For example, one of the largest protein hormones in the body is insulin. It's not only one strand of beads, it's like four strands that are wrapped around each other. So what happens is when that sugar goes up, it can literally cross those, those strands of protein and understand that everything in the body is electromagnetic in nature, meaning that not only does protein have to function, but for it to function, it has to be able to vibrate and move at a certain frequency within the body. Like, a, like the strings of a guitar, when you pluck it, you get a note. If I pluck the E string on a guitar or a violin, I get a sound that we know is the note we call E and that's vibrating at a certain number of hertz per second. We find that protein and everything in the body is working that way. So when sugar cross-links those protein strands, the protein is no longer able to generate the same function, and it becomes what are called glycated protein. And it creates a reaction that you see in this slide that is called, you produce what are called advanced glycation end products. It just means proteins that have been linked and cross-linked by sugar. And I love the acronym because that came out of the aging research. They call them A-G-E, H, because they find that when these chemicals accumulate, they are some of the most powerful factors for ongoing chronic inflammation and many of the aging phenomenon, phenomena in the human body. So for example, when AGEs go up and cross-link, let's suppose you have something like a protein like collagen in your skin. When it gets cross-linked and converted into an AGE, it loses its flexibility. So that idea of skin losing its elasticity with age is part of glycation. If you have protein in the lens of the eye and it gets cross-linked by these particular sugars, now we have the formation of cataract. So Many of the aging phenomena, everything from to cataract formation to collagen inflexibility are all linked with AGEs. And we also now have an idea that AGEs, these advanced glycation end products, 
play a major role in the amyloid beta plaques that are forming in Alzheimer's disease. So now there's even a mentality and a mindset that, wow, these chemicals are even playing a role in cognitive decline in the very devastating changes of Alzheimer, which are profound. And by the way, two out of three people that have Alzheimer's in America are women. So this massive impact on you know, cognitive decline. And here's the interesting piece. What we didn't know then that we know now is that not only are these generated in the body, but we now know that they can come into the body in foods. And that's why I created this slide. Let's blow this slide up just a little bit if we can. We can, yep, yeah, one second. Let's see if I can so take So people that can up. see it a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now, what this slide is, it just has the AGE, again, that's the advanced glycation end products, the content of food. And this is for three and a half ounces of food, 100 grams. Don't worry about what the units actually are. But all this slide does, it shows you a food and then there's a number next to it. That's the actual amount of AGEs in that food for three and a half ounces. Okay, which is about a half, a, which is about a half a cup, right? So let's look at it as like half a cup, if that makes sense to people a little bit easier. You'll notice that when we look at all that, and by the way, the notion from the aging field is, is that you want to keep the amount of that AGE content less than 10,000 units a day. When you start exceeding 10,000 units a day, you are remarkably increasing the possibility of inflammation and premature aging. Now, if you look at this, you'll see apples 30, cantaloupe 20, tomatoes 23, cucumbers 31, even things like sweet potato 72, white potato 17. So you notice when you're eating whole natural plant foods, you couldn't possibly get near 10,000 units a day. Think about that. That's three. If you had uh, three and a half, uh, you had a half a cup of potatoes, a half a cup of apples. I think you're frozen. There we go. Yes, I think Frank has frozen. So I think I can pick up here and I'm sure Frank's uh, feed will, will catch up with us in a second. But I know, I know he's been having problems with his connection all day, possibly some storms down in Florida there. Um, but what I know Frank would be coming on to is, you know, where we're looking at 10,000, not exceeding 10,000 well, a day. Well, half a cup of cantaloupe, half a half cup of tomato. Uh, Already you start. Sorry, Frank. Can you, you hear me now? Uh, yeah, we can. So I was just, I was just actually uh, sort of catching up, uh, catching everybody up. And I was just saying, you know, merely by eating just a little bit of fried bacon, you are ninefold in, you know, uh, sort of over no, and above. Oh, that's not, that's not ninefold. I mean, that's a hundredfold. It's 91,000 so, compared to 90, apples 000. and cantaloupe. Yes. There you go. Yes. So the bottom yeah. line is I want you to look at that. And here's another piece. Can you hear me now? Are we good? Yes, can. Yep. Okay. What the import here is that things that have higher fat content, along with protein and sugar are gonna have higher AGE content. So you'll notice even nuts and seeds will have a higher AGE content. And the bottom line is that's another reason why that we recommend again, eating them in small quantity in addition to just their, if you will, their uh, calorie density. And if you'll notice one thing we'll point out because we're recommending an eating plan that is SOS free, meaning no oil, no salt, oil, and sugar. You'll notice on this graph, if you look at olives, it's, it's about 1,600 units of AGEs per a half a cup. But if you convert that into olive oil, it's already over 11,000. And all the cheeses and everything, look, even three ounces of, of feta cheese, cream cheese, eight to 10,000. So if you're eating regular animal products, dairy products, and you're eating oil products and so on, you are so inundating the body with tens of thousands of AGE content on a daily basis, promoting premature inflammation and aging. Now, the beautiful thing about AGE content, it can be reduced in how we prepare our food. So by lightly steaming, lightly sauteing, boiling, it does reduce AGE content compared to heavy frying and barbecuing and high heat cooking. So the idea here is we're recommending whole foods that do not have animal-based products with high AGE content, which promotes tremendous inflammation and aging. And we recommend cooking those foods with cooking methods that are more liquefied. So lightly steaming, lightly sauteing, boiling, and that will also help to control some of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So you were saying then that it ten thousand a day is what you really you should want to do. stay under ten thousand a day, and and yes, you'll so that's notice what I was that saying ninety one thousand is 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 nine times bigger. That, well, so that's yeah, okay, that's what you meant. Well, so yes. think about that. And bacon, they you know you see commercials. Bacon is put in everything. It's unbelievable to me that yeah. they keep selling these cheese. And, and and the bottom line is you can see why. If the person is eating 30 to 40% of their diet from animal products, meat and dairy products, you can see how that promotes such premature aging on top of the fact that it's providing such an inflammatory outcome. So, you know, the bottom line is think about that. We have such a power of control in this story. And let me just say one thing to, to tie this all together. The intriguing thing is, is that not only do these whole foods all of these plants, fruits, vegetables, and the like, provide us with low calorie density and high nutrient density. Not only do they provide us with low AGE content, not only do they provide us with high antioxidant content, not only do they provide us with low inflammation, they're the very foods that activate the enzymes and hormones in the body that are the most known for reducing cellular aging. Okay. Uh, well, en enzymes like CERT1 and CAMPK, these are very sophisticated enzymes and chemicals in the body that are activated, they're upregulated, they're produced when we eat all of the polyphenol rich foods, apples, berries, soy products, turmeric, you know, nuts, seeds, berries, all of these things, deep greens, all of these foods are absolutely activating at a deep genetic level the production of the hormones and enzymes in our cells that the, the best science has shown will reduce the process of aging and promote better longevity and health. And speaking of the science, um, in case anybody's not convinced already, um, let's just uh, share this uh, final slide here um, as we draw to a close, um, because I want to just sh get, have people take a look at uh, some of the largest uh, ep epidemiological studies uh, really undertaken. And so, Frank, would you like to speak to some yeah, of these? Yeah, these are only three of, of many, 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 but these are very long epidemiological studies that have showed incredible correlations between the consumption of vegan foods, really whole plant foods without any animal products. And this study, as you'll notice, the Adventist study, which is done from 2002, 96,000 people. Look at the Epic Oxford study that was done that's really ongoing in England from 1993, 65,000 people. The Su Chi study with Buddhists from Taiwan, the studies like Framingham. And they have clearly shown that animals eating plant exclusive have basically half the death rate and a significant reduction in most of the major chronic diseases that we're talking about. They're aging without disease, they're aging without the need for medications, they're aging without the cognitive decline. And I think we need to wrap up with those ideas of quality of life because the truth of the matter is, this is really, as much as we go into the science, this is really about the, the mindset of performance and well being. And the truth of the matter is, we need to understand the power that we have to define our own biological aging. The years are going to pass. Chronologically, one year after another is going to follow. But the quality of our performance, the energy that we have in those years is a byproduct of these lifestyle choices. So for example, we, we didn't even talk about exercise, which is profound for improving the quality of life and aging. Stress management, how stress impacts us and what we do with stress can increase inflammation and aging. That's why simple stress management tools have been shown to affect the genetics of our system, extending telomere length and all of those things that are linked with aging at a cellular level. Exercise will activate that same anti-aging uh, enzyme, CERT1 by simple aerobic activity over time. So we need to understand that to be human, we need to be active. We need to create emotional poise by our sense of community and relationships where we're not allowing stress to promote this ongoing incredible inflammation and damage in, in totally dissolving our resilience in the natural world. We need to understand the importance of those healthy relationships. We need to understand that we all need a sense of purpose and function. Tell, you know, like we, we, we've talked about this before and you brought up the work of 
Ellen Langer, and I'm sure you will, that when people adopt these things that they did even in younger stages of life, they actually act like, and they actually respond physiologically with outcome that's like those younger years. You know, it's funny, the other day, as an example, I was doing heavy duty research on some stuff and I got so embroiled with this and it brought me back to the time of how I researched in my thirties when I was doing my PhD. And when I got up from that, damn, if I didn't feel like that 30 year old person again. In fact, I even tested myself with certain balance issues and it was doing things as almost as if 40, 50 years younger. So hmm. people need to understand how important that mindset is because in our culture, there's so much ageism that tries to define people by the numbers of their lives. So that mm. most people buy into the fact that at 50, this is gonna happen, 60, this is gonna happen, 70, I'm gonna decline and 80, it's over. When mm. in fact, the truth of the matter is none of that is defined. It literally becomes defined by our mindset and those day-to-day -day choices that are eliminating factors of damage and provoking and informing the body with the highest amount of energy that we can. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I think that uh, it's very telling that the two scientists who won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of telomeres and telomerase, Blackburn and Appel, um, they have written various books, uh, obviously since, since winning the, the Nobel Prize, which have gone on to become sort of worldwide bestsellers. And it's very intriguing that they absolutely say that all of their science is, it underpins a plant-based whole food, plant-based or plant-exclusive, as you like to say, Frank, lifestyle, exercise, mindset, meditation, good sleep, proper hydration, the whole thing. I mean, because we have to accept that we humans are, we are, we, we are not just sort of the, the sum of our total parts. We are holistic entities. And so therefore this has to be approached in a completely holistic way. And one of the best ways of doing that is get your mindset right, because if you get your mindset right, everything else can follow because you are therefore empowered to be able to make the changes and make the decisions and choices that we need to make on a day-to-day, hour-by-hour, minute-by-minute basis. Not just for ourselves, but also, of course, for our loved ones as well, because everything that we do has that ripple effect. It's like popping a, chucking a, a little pebble into a pond and it then ripples out because we lead by example, we nurture people and help people to find this way of life. And uh, so, you know, the little changes that we make just have this profound uh, ripple effect on outwards into the world. And uh, I think what you've said here, Frank, has been so absolutely outstanding. I cannot thank you enough. And uh, I'm sure AJ, you would completely agree. It's just been- Yes, yeah, we, we, we loved having him. And, and if you don't mind, if you don't have, if you have a couple more minutes, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Yes, absolutely. I'd love that. Yes, please. Thank you. Well, the first one is from Daria. Do, does air frying uh, cause AGEs? Yeah, you know, that is the best question because I'm going to tell you, the jury is out for me on that. The idea is that we've known that frying heat generates these things. Uh, whether you do it in an air fryer or you're doing it with an oil base, there's not enough information really to really address that question the way it should be. I personally, if I'm going to do something that would look like it comes from an air fryer, I tend to do it on parchment paper at a very low heat in the oven, and I'll still get that kind of an effect without the higher heat that can sometimes be generated, whether it's air frying or oil frying. It's a great question, and we don't have a full answer about it. My gut feeling is, and again, this is only my opinion now, is that even air frying will probably generate some AGE content. I would agree. Anytime you're anytime you're exposing uh, sugar and protein in the presence of oxygen, especially in the presence of heat, you will generate AGEs. So I would absolutely agree with Frank on that. Thank you. Did either of you happen to see the article on CNN about Nancy Pelosi's diet, how she eats chocolate ice cream for breakfast and hot dogs for lunch? <laughs> Oh, wow. No, I, I haven't seen I that. I did not see that. No. It came out today. But the point is, um, you know, the, the article was is like the love affair with unprocessed foods. So Ooh, I know it's horrible, though. Mm. And, you know, and I see these people. I was looking at the president's address last night and looking at those people in the Senate who are really living on a band that the aging is not it's not good. It's just not good. 
It's the same over it? here as well. They they don't look yeah. well. I mean, it's actually shocking when you see sort of leaders of the NHS, for example. You know, we have the national. Look, Health if anything if anything comes out of this, well. really, if anything comes out of this, I want to just emphasize that people need to know that they have a major input to how they're going to age in this world. They do have an input. I think because sometimes people just surrender to these models that have been imposed on them as we've talked about. And it's a huge mistake. That quality of life, that performance is such a byproduct of the kinds of things we've talking about that you know we've had these movies like Game Changers with young athletes. Those are not the game changers to me. The game changers to me are people like you, AJ, me, all of the people that have really shown in their 60s and 70s and 80s that they're performing at such a level and at such a quality of life. That's the real game changer. And I think people need to know that when they start adopting this way of living and thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take myself back on. Well, this was fabulous, guys. It was so fun uh, hearing from you, Dr. Frank. And uh, oh, it was such a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. It was lovely. Thank you, Janie, for inviting me to this. Really. Welcome. Well, you are welcome anytime. And please come back the second Wednesday of every month at 11 a.m. <laughs> Pacific time for Rewind Your Body Clock with Janie Goddard and maybe special guest Dr. Sabatino. Who knows? Thank you guys so much. It's such a Thank pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. All the best. Of course. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 1 p.m. today when I have another special guest.